Over the last 20 years, a slow transition has taken place from state and government bodies towards privatized government agencies handling everything from public services to housing. Now this story in particular is the, one of the most shocking we've come across recently. One of the local residents, Umberto Silvestri, has been forcibly evicted from his home and beaten up by the police in the process and we have it on film. Take a look at this footage. Have you got an order for me? Can you, can you pass me the order, please? Can you please pass the order? Have you got an order for me? Can you show it to me, please, through the letterbox? I'm afraid I can't help you then. No, you cannot you force anything. Right. You don't have my consent to do that. You don't have my, you don't have authority or consent to do that. No, no, don't open. Don't open it, for goodness sake. Oh! Oh, oh, you just oh, me. oh my God! Right. Oh, I've got you out of the camera. No, that's, no, that's not fun, you just hurt him. Oh my how God. How dare you? How dare you? That's how... For the residents of this borough, Kensington and Chelsea, if they ever have a serious problem or there's an unpaid bill, and for whatever reason, they might have missed a court date. In the case of Umberto Silvestri, he had a heart attack. The ramifications of missing your court date due to a medical incident could be devastating. They, they pushed me down on the floor, two of them. They, two of them grabbed me uh, while I was moving away, and, uh, and I wasn't expecting it. And that's why I fell down. They just, uh, they, were, they were keeping me away from re-entering the, the premises. Yes, yes, that's what they, they were doing. That was their service. It, no, they didn't even allow me to, to collect my medicine. Uh, to go back and get some clothes because uh, I had everything, everything inside. I didn't know what to do. If you notice when I take my glasses off, took my glasses off and he probably expected me to, I don't know, headbutt him or something like that. And in fact you can see that he, he lets me go and then he goes for, uh, for something here and everybody thought he was going for the handcuffs. No, he was going for the spray, for the, for the paper spray. I didn't have shoes and uh, basically then some, some, some other company came up, uh, those guys that just uh, fit one of these metal doors. I didn't expect that kind of uh, behavior from, from, from anybody. Someone at the council, someone within this entire system uh, is aware that Umberto Silvestri has more than one medical condition and I think it's also important to to bring up a couple of things because we've had the uh, video on YouTube and it's a gruesome video okay these things are not I mean it's worse than television because it's really happening I saw the door slam into his head and I thought poor guy now he's got a concussion or worse and uh, and yeah, I just had these horrible visions it's instantaneously. I mean, the guy's 58 years old. I thought, well, you know, that's it. You know, he could, he could be a goner. Um, yeah, it was very scary. It was uh, freaky. 
uh, it's like the, the stormtroopers coming into your door. Yeah, <laughs> wow. But they do it very nicely. It's all a necessary force. I found it absolutely shocking to see a man in his own house, uh, to see the door battered open to the extent it then injures him and forces him to the ground. And I have watched the most brutal behaviour by people who I'm not quite sure who they are. They're not police, uh, they're not empowered in any way, but their actions are clearly brutal, aggressive, and this is the sort of behaviour I would expect to see from government officials uh, in the Eastern Bloc or the Soviet Union or probably communist China. But where are we? We're in Britain in 2012. It's important to understand that, you know, he was once someone like everyone else. He's 58 years old, electromechanical engineer, Mr. Mainstream, and he got electrocuted. And I'm sure that had something to contribute to his present condition, which is diabetic. And he's also had the heart attack. And as we just discussed, um, he was doing court uh, last September. And he did have a heart attack, and while he was nearly on his deathbed, uh, they were busy prosecuting him in absentia. But of course, it was, it's not a real court. They issue corporate policy out of there. I expected them to kick the door down. I knew that they're going to, well, I suspected that they're going to steamroll him. Because this is what the state does. They steamroll. Everybody does their job. It's a machine. When people are asked to perform, uh, generally they, they're not allowed to ask why or how or how much. It's been decided for them and they're wasting their time. And any investigation that's done is always an internal investigation. It, this is what happened with Umberto as well. We're going to investigate ourselves and see how well we did in, in evicting you. Now, I don't imagine that their investigation will include the, the film footage because more than one camera was there. So I, never, I never refused to pay. I never refused to pay. Mm -hmm. I always accepted on condition they showed me the accounting details yeah. of where the provenance of those, of those charges. He made the fatal mistake of asking questions. That's, that, that's where we are here. You do as you're told. Uh, you're part of the order. You follow corporate policy. And if there are small charges that don't add up, if you're being charged for a service that you're not actually getting, and that service is pretend rent. It's a second rent. It's a second rent. Here we have what uh, um, members of the TMO, obviously an agency of the Royal Bar of Kensington at Chelsea, gave me two days after uh, to, uh, well, basically they say this is the, this is the warrant or the possession order, this is the document who authorized them to evict me. Now, it says here, notice of appointment, then in bracket, with bailiff, or execution of warrant of possession or delivery. So, this is supposed to be the warrant, a valid warrant or a valid order for me to, to, to comply with their demands. What is it? It's a notice. It says here, it's the title, the title of the document. This is a document, it's titled Notice. A notice is a notice. It's not an order. It's not a command, it's no, it's nothing, it's got no value whatsoever. Anybody can, can issue a notice. It's no sign, there is no signature apart from the acceptance from the bailiff, because this is directed to the bailiff, is an appointment of bailiff. What you have is what Umberto quite rightly calls uh, the requirement of performance. They're constantly sending out notices to people to perform something. Yeah, and that performance generally is, go pay this bill. They say, this is this amount, go pay it. Yeah. So there should be no questions, you've got the order, why don't you just go pay it and shut up? I noticed that for the benefit of the viewing public, meaning the few neighbors who had become interested, 
and also for the gang. Uh, the gang, uh, the uniformed gang that was there, the community officers. Now, I don't fault any of those people for looking at themselves as, you know, being, uh, contributing a positive service. Yeah, but I don't think they know what they were part of. Yeah, because this was an exercise in conditioning. It tells you one thing. When we want to evict someone, we never, ever lose. Because we know how to do it. So the trick here is, as we covered before, is that it's a private outfit, no matter what they call themselves, they're going to deliver a piece of paper that says one thing on the piece of paper, but out of their mouths, verbally, they're calling it a warrant, they're calling it an order, they're calling it all sorts of things. It sounds like they just came off of LA law, you know, quite a few things. We got a warrant, we got the posse, we got, you know, we're all here. And we have the right to kick down your door and your neighbors have a right to watch us do it. Because once they know we can do it to you, we can do it to them. 20 years ago, uh, we didn't have problems with us. 30 years ago, we could drive in London and uh, it was okay. You didn't pay so much. Now everybody pays more. Everybody pays more in housing. And they put prices up. Now it used to be once a year. Now they put it up twice a year. So um, people get really irate about it. But council, council tax? Uh, council tax goes with the council tax. It's a different story. But I'm talking about the rent itself. The rent itself yeah. yeah. And so uh, I, I hear a lot of grumbling around. People don't know what to do. And they get uh, really frustrated and upset. But there, there's nothing they can do and nothing I can do because <laughs> what am I going to do? We need to take a lawyer. A lawyer will take our money. No, thank you very much. So we're in a double bind. Nobody said that uh, they gave permission to the tenants management organization to operate people's lives, to make them perform. So they file one notice, another notice, but don't dare ask a question, and that's what Umberto did. He, he asked questions, and he asked sensible questions. If that's the tenants, that okay, the, 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 the tax burden is heavy, but what can we do? We don't know what to do, so we pay. When it started out, it was tenants management organization, implying that it belonged to the tenants. Now it's tenant management organization where they are managing the tenants themselves. Um, what we are watching um, is council housing in particular being stripped away from people and replaced by housing associations. And then we are seeing that across the country more and more rules and restrictions are being placed on tenants by those housing associations. And effectively the housing associations are now at the point of making up law and being able to um, then bring in thugs, they may be trained thugs but they're still thugs, in order to enforce what rules and regulations they think are acceptable. This is a very, very dangerous uh, state for the country to be getting into. And of course, it doesn't matter if we look at the Labour Party or we look at David Cameron and the Tory Party, we are seeing the same drive for this common agenda, this common purpose, uh, which, is me which means effectively that ordinary people are being um, put at the bottom of a pile to be treated by the public sector and corporations uh, as those two bodies choose. It's all about guardianship. It's all about where you belong. It's all about deciding how to corral the individual, how, how to label you, how to categorize you. And as many people already say, when you finally look at who we are in the corporate state, uh, we, we wear many hats. Um, it's been said uh, that uh, we're like one of those uh, places in a warehouse or a Dewey Decimal System filing cabinet. Do you feel like you're treated like a criminal? <laughs> well, no, well, maybe they, they treat criminals much better. <laughs> I've been treated like uh, the last of the last, a slave or, uh, you know, not even a private in the army. A private in the army, you know, the officer, they treat you okay if they see you, if you have some kind. Yeah, it's like to be, you know, and subhuman or something, just to, exactly, they treat us like, like, uh, like if you are in a, in a labor camp. Just 
in a concentration camp or something like that, you know. It's, if you don't do what we tell you, bang, we send a squad, we send, we send a gang, the gang is gonna beat you, like, like in, in the sheep, you know, in the, we are at the bottom, like the rats <laughs> down there, <laughs> and uh, if we show our head, bang, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> no one has a clue on how to deal with a corporate state and have a remedy. And when you don't have a remedy, it's not law. That's the entire point. The, the state and the public sector are now starting to treat ordinary people and ordinary families as cattle. And of course, we know where this ultimately led to in Nazi Germany. And I do not feel at all squeamish by saying, unless people in this country start to wake up very, very quickly, we're going to see a rapid increase in this brutal, aggressive behavior and some people are going to be shocked to wake up one morning and discover that Britain is now in an equivalent fascist dictatorship to Nazi Germany. For anyone who knows what they're looking at right at this moment, it's, it's one of those things that <clears throat> you should recognize is happening in your lifetime and that you're fortunate to be living in. If, if you're not looking around you, you're not looking up and down behind you in front, if you're not investigating what the world is about, then you're going to miss it. It'll be like the 60s, yeah? If you can remember it, you were probably never there. Um, I, don't, I don't expect anybody else to, to take responsibility for what I do. I'm taking responsibility. I go to the point uh, wide back where I say, okay, enough is enough. Uh, I can't take this anymore. I have to try and do something. I wonder if they're going to let us inside. <laughs> <laughs> so Kensington and Chelsea to make it look like it's a council, Kensington, Chelsea, but it's nothing to do with the... the it's, it's a contract. Yeah, of contractor. course. It's, they are contractors. They do certain administrative uh, uh, duties. They cover certain administrative uh, uh, duties for, for, for the local administration. It's an LTD. The TMO is an LTD. A limited company. A limited yeah. company, yes masquerading as, as, a, as, as a government, as a government management agency. agency yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going in. Sorry, uh, we're doing a documentary on uh, him, Umberto. Yeah, yeah. Sir, thank and you. Sure. Please don't point that camera in. Yeah. Hi, can you turn off the camera, please? It's it's no it's it's TMO is like the mafia, but what's the difference between the mafia and the the private agency? Okay, I, as everybody knows by now, I grew up in Italy, and there is this this way of dealing with situation, and it is always the the mafia, the, 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 the idea of the mafia, or even watching on movies and this and that. It's not like in the movies. I mean, there might be some kind of extortion going on, and it, it goes on all over the world. But at least with those guys, there is always a way to, to, to come to, to, to a resolution or to an arrangement. I mean, they, they can see that whether whether your business or whether you can actually do what they what they demand from you, and and they will get to a point in where you say, hey, you know, you are asking me to give you more, but I can't, I can't, I really can't. You you asking me to what to go and, and steal the money or to break the law or to 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 injure somebody to 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 get the money to give it to you. They, they know that you can only go to a certain point, especially somebody with, with limitation, with health problems, with, with, with so many problems. So you would come to some kind of negotiation, you should just say, hey, you know, hey, uh, go father, you know, please, I mean, that's, that's all I can do, don't ask for more. And at some point they relent, they, 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 they get over, okay. But be a good boy, you know, if we need a favor, this and that. that that's the scenario of the matter. With these people, you cannot, uh, you cannot reason. Just 
do as you told and shut up, don't ask questions. This is it, and if you don't do it, we send the, the, the guys, they just, uh, they just buy the services of some uh, uh, private militia, and, and that's it, and that's what they do. Mercenary, they, 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 they buy the services of mercenary, in this case, the police, which, uh, which works as peace officer, uh, as I said before, as uh, in the dual role of peace officers and policy enforcers. And, and that's it, that's what we're dealing with. Everybody's dealing with it. The story of Umberto Silvestri is not the only one. He's not alone by any means. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of other residents who are going through exactly the same situation, who are being forcibly evicted from their homes. But the most significant thing about this disturbing trend is that these private public initiative and private public partnerships are not accountable. And if you're lucky enough to face them in a court of law, in a private administrative court, you might likely feel the might of an army of corporate lawyers, or you could simply be beaten and broken like Umberto Silvestri, a testament to how far the corporate state will go. I'm Patrick Henningsen for the UK Column.